Ruler School is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory and these amazing patrons. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey there, Rulers. Welcome back to Ruler School. This is DMO73 bringing you commentary for a feature match between myself on Mystery Box Arthur Machines versus Josh playing a stat control based version of a Lucifer control. Both of these decks are ones that I brought to the table. Uh, I designed the Lucifer list, and then uh, Brandon Bremont is actually the one who sent me the Mystery Box Arthur list. Both lots of fun. Um, the Lucifer list kind of based on particularly manipulation of your opponent's um, creatures stats to either make them lose trades or just get killed by um, game state and things like that. And then the Arthur list is very, very aggressive. It plays a lot of one drops and its whole idea is just to flood the board, amass a ton of pressure. And then if your opponent kind of answers that, you eventually just get to a point where you can play mystery box once or even twice because there's some in the deck as well. And you just reflood the field and keep applying pressure that way. So we'll have to see who comes out on top. Um, Josh is going to be going first. The Lucifer deck does have a pretty standard discard package in it as well, um, but it also does is predominantly a creature-based deck um, for the most part. Seeing he's got two rays in his hand there, as well as an Oborazuki, a March of the Dead, and a Skeleton Horde. So not a bad hand for him to start with. Oborazuki pairs really nicely with Skeleton Horde, and he chooses to just keep that hand. So calling that first stone, hitting the magic stone of the undead, used to kind of mill the, the deck itself, mainly just to replace a basic darkness stone, and hitting that skeleton horde off the top. Going into my turn, basic water stone. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and play a Vivian. And then choosing not to do anything there, we're gonna accept the four damage from the skeleton horde. We really don't mind, um, but, we, but we don't really wanna energize out too early, um, especially knowing that he'd be going into his second turn and he could just play uh, Black Rosario and just kill them right off the bat. So we're gonna go ahead and take the four damage there. It's not a big deal. Down comes the Oborozuki in which he sacrifices the skeleton horde uh, to give it that bl fresh blood counter and then he'll get a 1-1 token out of it. Um, this is a pretty standard maneuver for this deck. Uh, and then you often use things like March of the Dead or sacrificing those tokens to use Oborozuki's um, stat decretion of minus four, minus four whenever she swings. And she is now an 8-8 flyer. That's important to know. He's going to go ahead and use um, the uh, Tears of the Fallen here. Force me to discard a random card. Machine's ultimately not caring too much about discard because we do have Scrap and Build to kind of capitalize it. Um, but it is still something we don't necessarily want to see early on. Hitting one of those Guinevere's out of my hand. You know, we have that Skyfall, which feels pretty nice. To be able to potentially answer that Oborozuki. Magic Stone of Time. Uh, Mechanized Knight comes into play here. I get a counter on the Vivian. And choosing to play a second Mechanized Knight to put another counter on the Vivian, get, make her a five cost creature. Uh, and then swing in the air for five. If he decides to block with the Oborozuki, I do have Skyfall to be able to answer it, which is why I'm leaving up that one will. Does decide to go ahead and block. Down comes the Skyfall, bounces the Oborozuki back to his hand, and the five damage goes through, taking him down to 35. So with the access to um, something like maintenance, uh, I'm feeling pretty comfortable in this position because next time, next turn, I'm going to be swinging for five with Vivian, potentially being able to manipulate the board state in terms of tapping stuff down. Plus, I'll have two seven sevens crashing down, so that's a total of 19 damage. Um, very quickly putting Josh on like a two-turn clock, essentially, if he can't answer this board state right now. And unfortunately, as it is more of a creature-based uh, Lucifer list, dealing with that kind of wide board state really does come down to the runes. Um, so he has to be really careful about exactly how he wants to approach this situation. He's thinking about the Oborozuki again. Maybe a March of the Dead. He's got a couple March of the Dead in hand. Ultimately decides to make a move um, that I think is a little suboptimal. He's gonna go ahead and do Jet Black Wings here. Um, 
in response to the cast of Jet Black Wings, I'm going to go ahead and use um, Vivian's effect to tap down the counter and then maintenance to put the two plus one plus one counters on the two mechanized knights. So they'll go down to being one ones for the turn, but they'll still survive. And this would have tapped down his token. So Josh essentially spent three will to tap down one of his own dudes and remove a three to, a three cost or one cost flyer. Um, so pretty efficient uh, response to that um, play from him. Out comes a donut drone and another mechanized knight, and then we'll put a counter on the mechanized knight with a dramaturgy. Like I said, this deck is a lot of one drops. We'll use one of them to kill um, the uh, token, just get it off the board so it's not an easy sack target for Obrozuki, and then we'll swing in for seven, taking him down to 28. And then at that point, we're just passing the turn. So at this point now, we've got uh, two. Um, in the grave we've got two machines in the grave but if he does you know decide to go black rosario here or something like that it gets us to four in the grave which is a pretty prime number to be able to do scrap and build pretty effectively um now ultimately we're playing against a black deck but the thing is um these evil elemental uprising stuff like that doesn't actually work um, because you remove them as cost uh so like Scrap and build is pretty safe like, even against a darkness deck unless they preemptively evil elemental you um, Which is why sitting at like four or five machines is pretty good because you still get to dig a lot and you're gonna get to be able to grab say a Lancelot or a Percival if you're playing that And lots of different options. So down comes the Ray And then we're gonna see the black Rosario cast here. He's thinking about it anyway See there's also that ruined earth the problem is the Ruined Earth would have tapped him out and wouldn't wipe my board, so essentially he'd just be paying to then lose the game. The, um, I think if Josh had waited maybe one more turn with the Jet Black Wings, just said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and accept some damage from this, not take lethal, um, live at this kind of lower life total, uh, and then the follow-up would be in upkeep Jet Black Wings, follow that up immediately with a... Um, Ruined Earth, that is minus 10, minus 10 to the board. No real way for me to get around it, and I'm down a stone. And machines don't really play swiftness creatures. Well, they can if you play Gawain, but this list doesn't play Gawain. Um, so I think it was a little bit of a risky, you know, that could have been a play, um, but that maybe he just didn't see it or didn't think about it, uh, or just didn't want to take risk taking that damage. Playing the Donut Drone, swinging in for that seven damage. He says, that's fine, I'm gonna take it. Take him down to 21. Swing in for two with the Donut Drone here. Now you notice that uh, I played the Donut Drone here before I go into combat. Really, there's no reason because there's no reason really not to because he's tapped out. Uh, and this Donut Drone just threatens a lot of um, combat tricks essentially without having to necessarily sacrifice the Donut Drone that I could swing with for damage. Um, but I'm still leaving up three will in advance. So I swing with the other Mechanized Knight. He says, I'm going to block. Okay, cool. Well, the Donut Drone that made it through is now going to hit you in the face um, or is now going to get sacrificed to pump it up so I win the battle against the Ray. Uh, and then I'll swing in with the other knight, and he says, um, find that damage that goes through. And then after that happens, I'll go ahead and pump up. Uh, and then, so I could have pumped up before, right? But I decided to do it kind of after the fact. And I get a Lancelot off of the scrap and build. So I got four creatures my own to the graveyard to make it a four card scrap and build there by sacrificing the Dona drones. So I got a lot of value out of it. Now I'm sitting on Lancelot plus... Um, put some extra counters on him with the Dramaturgies, and then I'm sitting on a grand total of 13, uh, 19 counters. So I can uh, nuke three creatures uh, with Lancelot, or destroy three creatures and nuke the board for 10 counters if I need to, which is one of the reasons why I don't really necessarily care about that Ray the Black Owl right now, because even if it does flip into zero, I'm pretty high up on life. Uh, and then at that point in time, I can just go, okay, well, now that it's flipped, I'll go ahead and nuke the board of everything that you might play, uh, getting rid of that bubble if I need to, and then I can just pop and kill whatever is left. But the nuking from uh, Lancelot's effect is not really going to be a problem anyway. We do catch the ray here in just a second. Um, just a little bit lagging on uh, remembering to flip over the ray. Decides to call for that stone. It's another magic stone of corruption. I 
Looking at his hand saying, I don't really know what I want to do to deal with this. If he plays too many creatures, they're all just going to get destroyed. Ultimately, he has to try to kill the Lancelot right now, but it seems like his hand doesn't really have that much in it. Um, so he's playing just a little bit of damage control here by doing the um, Black Rosario, which is essentially the threat and saying, hey, if you want to nuke the board this turn, you got to do it right now. You'll only still create three creatures with it, um, and then you'll be, you know, you'll have to lose two creatures in the process as well. However, it, rather than using the board wipe here, I'm going to go ahead and use a couple shots of Lancelot's effect here um, to just spend three counters, shoot the zero, gets negated, spend three counters, shoot the zero, now it's gone. Now I still have access to the board wipe if needed, and with just Lancelot and the Mechanized Knight, that's threatening lethal on board. See the March of the Undead? bringing back the two rays. Ultimately, that's not going to be able to save him, however, because I can just swing with the Mechanized Knight, he'd be swinging for 12 damage, and then I can just use the counters from the Lancelot to go ahead and kill whatever he's going to block with. 12 damage is going to go through. The deck does run. Um, yeah, I see there's the Look of the Corruptions in there. Ultimately, at this point, that card really doesn't matter because he's facing down lethal. The deck also does run... Um, Life Severing Blade. It's unfortunate that I just didn't draw into it. Couples really nicely with things like Oberozuki. You know, swing with the four cost. It survives. It takes. They take damage. You sacrifice it to Oberozuki. Get a counter, and then you can turn on Life Severing Blade for one and get a free removal spell out of it, or a semi-free removal spell out of it. So swinging in for twelve, he goes to block, kill it with the Lancelot, and then we move on to game two. As we go into the next game, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you're notified when all of our videos goes live, and consider supporting the channel by being a member here on YouTube or by checking it out on Patreon for all the cool exclusive perks that come with supporting us. Thank you guys so much, let's go to the next game. So chooses to put me on the draw again. Hopefully this time can see a little bit of a better balance between creatures and removal. Hopefully slow down my aggressive start. Now, people might be wondering why I play Arthur over Loki. Ultimately, you could probably play this deck either way, but if you wanted to possibly play cards like um, the Skynet or things like that, and there are some cards in the sideboard, um, potentially, that could make use of Arthur better. The other thing is, too, is Arthur flies, so sometimes it's nice to have a flying J ruler to be able to finish the game off. Plus, Arthur himself can fuel the graveyard for a scrap and build play, whereas Loki can't. So first turn Skeleton Horde into a look of uh, Tears of the Fallen. He's going to hit that fifth card. It's a Donut Drone. And passes the turn to me. See, I do have that Lancelot in hand, which feels really nice. The Vanilla 4-4. Um, one, the Vanilla 4-4 machine. This deck plays, I think, a grand total of 16 one-drops. Maybe more. Might even be 20. Um, because we want to be able to just like continually put pressure as much as possible for as little as possible and keep flooding the, bo the board, especially to make use of things like Lancelot. The more machines you have on board, obviously, the better Lancelot becomes. Swings in for four with the Skeleton Horde. You see, that's fine. There's a play we've seen before. He's going to sacrifice it to Oberozuki, get that fresh blood counter, and get a new... Um, Skeleton token there. Colin Verstone hit that Dramaturgy nice and early, which feels pretty good. Later on, those just translate to free damage, or free potential damage by adding extra counters to things.
fighting the other mechanized soldier here. Just to get another body on board. I think I'm through I think I have a skyfall in hand. Um, so that's the reason why. Oh, it's a dragon sword's breath. Swings the deal, Brozuki. We just see the dragon sword's breath. Go ahead, and we're gonna use the energize to bounce it back to his hand. Take him down to 36. And then with nothing quick cast, we're gonna go ahead and put a counter on the little soldier. They might be wondering, like, why not leave up Will? Um, there's really no reason for me to not. The deck has very minimal, remo very minimal removal. Most of it would only cost one anyway. And the stuff we want to be casting during our opponent's turn is primarily free in the form of maintenance. We want to be doing a lot of combat tricks. That's a lot of what Blue's identity is. Uh, and so leaving Will up during our opponent's turn Unless we're trying to play like keys to skull and stuff, which are in the sideboard, but not in the main, um, which is how we play these games. Just really isn't uh, super relevant when I can be adding extra counters to kind of build up the momentum. I'm going to see that Black Rosario, though, just come down and get rid of the two. But I'm fine with that because it costs him two will and he doesn't have any pressure on board other than the one damage from the counter. It's just going to take me down to 35 and I'm okay with that. Plus it costs him to use one of his master runes or use the master rune this early. Playing a Glint of Insight. Calling Lance a lot. Hits two, unfortunately, leaving me with just a Sky Round Musketeer. But, again, the beauty is that he has left me up with a lot of machines to be able to uh, scrap and build very effectively. So I can play out this Guinevere, which just drew, uh, for two counters. Say, so let's go ahead and take a risk. Let's go ahead and play the Scrap and Build. Removing uh, four, I believe. Oh, well, five. And I do see one of the other Lancelots off the top there, debating on whether or not I want to play it versus something else. I say, you know what, let's go ahead and just get those counters out there. Let's get a Lancelot on board. And I can also put another counter on it with the Dramaturgy. This essentially also gives me access to two removal spells because with the maintenance, uh, I can pump them both up to being um, having three counters on them. I choose not to use the Dramaturge here, but I think I actually might correct myself and say, wait a minute before you draw, let's actually go ahead and add it on there. Would have been a better play here if I don't catch it myself, which ultimately is, is would be Josh's prerogative when we're playing. Um, but the proper play there would be to just spend the Dramaturge to put an extra counter on Lancelot. Uh, so then even after spending three counters from Lancelot, if I have to off of the maintenance play, I still have one to keep him at a nice 7-7 seven, seven and keep him outside of a range of being um, uh, tears, uh, sorry, um, Jet Black Tip Wings. Yeah, there I go and catch it. So Josh is kind, obviously, and we're trying to give the most optimum play. That is the proper play there. Um, because at this point in time, if I put two counters on Viv and two counters, or Guinevere and two counters on Lancelot, they both survive a Jet Black Wings. Uh, and then um, I can even remove three counters from the Lancelot to kill something if I need to uh, and still have him survive a Jet Black Wings. Which, now that Black Rosario is gone, is the main removal threat to my board. Swings in with one, I say, you know what? Absolutely fine. There is no reason for me to walk into a potential removal spell or even take that one damage. Obrozuki comes in. It's going to sacrifice that uh, skeleton token to get the fresh blood counter. Make her an 8 8 flyer. And then pay two. Play the Ray the Black Owl. Potentially support it. Ultimately, against machines, Ray the Black Owl is not a super great tool, simply because of the fact that we have Lancelot to be able to board wipe, which completely ignores her targeted removal. So playing a Vivian, following that up by playing a Skyround Musketeer, who puts a counter on himself, and then Vivian sees him come into play, so she gets a counter, and then we'll put another counter on her with the Dramaturgy. Moving into combat, we'll say, you know what? You start to think about swinging with the Guinevere first, and then you go, you know what, let's go ahead and swing with the Lancelot first, so that if you try to block with the um, Oborozuki or anything, we can just kill it. He says, no, that's fine, I'll take it. So it takes the 8 damage, taking him down to 28. It's 
debating exactly whether or not I want to pull the trigger on maintenance now or wait to use it as a punish. Ultimately, in this matchup, it's probably just better to use it as a punish, especially when I'm ahead on life like this. Sure, I'm going to be taking eight, potentially more, because of the ray, um, but it's better for me to wait and use that maintenance um, when he decides to commit to something like a Jet Black Wings. The two of them together is just 16 damage, um, which I'm on a three turn clock at that point, and he's staring down a significantly larger amount of damage from my board. It's just gonna progressively get bigger and bigger. Stone from the Dark Castle gets that mystery counter. If he gets one more, he can awaken. Uh, he, he can give the uh, Glint of Insight in his graveyard remnant. Unfortunately, though, I'm playing on top decks, so discard at this point in time just really isn't going to do much. Really debating whether or not he wants to try to um, just amass more board presence, which again is a little bit of a risk because Lancelot's on the board. Find a way to somehow remove Lancelot or just play Jet Black Wings. Ultimately, though, he knows the maintenance is there, so Jet Black Wings is like just like it is in the last game, pretty suboptimal. I think the proper play here would be actually to um, play a two-drop creature just to put another body on board leave up the other ones as blockers and then go for a minus 10 minus 10 play instead he tries to do soul prison here and i believe he's targeting the lancelot and i say you know what before that happens we'll go ahead and cast the maintenance And then we'll spend counters, leaving them on Vivian to do the board wipe here. And then we'll sack the counters um, after the sack the Lancelot before the Soul Prison resolves, before it gets to steal lights a lot, uh, and give the uh, Guinevere two more counters. So it gets to play this ray. It does get to come in. It doesn't have any kind of enter effects or anything else like that, so it doesn't have to worry about the. Uh, negging the all of the effects that comes from lancelot destroying the board but he does just have to pass the turn at that point it does tap him out to do that and he did lose two creatures in the process so essentially he paid three will and a card to um steal two creatures but he also lost two creatures so in the end he paid three cards to take two cards so that's an, ultimately a minus one Calling Stone with Arthur here. We're starting to get the mystery box range. Just a couple more machine, or a couple more turns. Uh, if I can't find a way to get lethal, which is quite possible because of the fact that I'm top decking and I've already used scrap and build. Um, just a couple more turns, uh, and we'll see that uh, mystery box be able to come out and kind of reflood the field. Do get to play a second Vivian here, which comes down rather nicely. Deciding to play the Diversive Evolution, also a very awesome card for this, having Human, Machine, Wanderer, and Fairy uh, because of the four different types. So I get to put a 1-1 one, one, one counter on something, a 2-2 two, two counter on something else, 3-3 three, three counters on something else, and 4-1-1 one, one counters on one more thing. So all four of my creatures are going to get buffed up this turn, which is very, very nice. So I'll put the 1-1 one, one on Guinevere. 2-2 two, two on the Musketeer, 3-3 um, three, three on the uh, Vivian, on the first Vivian, so she'll go up to having 6, and then 4 on the other one. Or she'll be at 5, actually. I think that's an incorrect play on my side. No, she saw the Vivian come in, so yeah, she'd be up to 6 counters. So she'd be swinging in the air for 9 damage. Just misplaced the die before. Takes, her down to, takes him down to 19, because he has no way to block it. Swinging in for uh, seven, 
with the Musketeer. Taking him down to 11. Add a couple more counters with the Dramaturgy because I'm out of stones anyway. And say pass the turn. The right is going to get to flip again here. But I say in response, we're going to go ahead and tap down the ray. So it'll be coming in as a tapped zero. So even though it is flipped, before it had that protection, we were going to tap it down. Just to make sure that it doesn't get to swing at me this turn. And that's not even a threat when I crack back against him next turn. Because I'm definitely threatening lethal here. Josh is kind of backed into a corner, really needing to play that Jet Black Wings here. Ultimately, though, it's still not going to be able to do much because of the fact that, that, one, both the Vivians are big enough to survive, and two, the Guinevere can sack the Musketeer to survive. Now, you're going to see us execute this pretty poorly, um, and this is one of those kind of execution mistakes that we talked about recently on the podcast in terms of just, or sorry, not even that. This is almost a knowledge mistake or a capitalization error. This is ultimately, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. This is ultimately a capitalization error, um, which is remembering what effects you have. Um, and we kind of rework it here again, and I'm like, wait a minute, if I just sacrifice the Musketeer and responds to the Jet Black Tears, Guinevere is up to having seven defense and then goes down to only having one defense, and then she gets to survive for the turn. And I'm still sitting at a grand total of 14 counters, so I could even make use of Guinevere at the beginning of my turn to kill something. He's going to say March of the Dead for the other three will, and bring back a couple of cards, the Oberozuki. I think he brings back Oberozuki and Skeleton Knight, and then immediately sacrifices the Skeleton Knight to Oberozuki to make it an 8-8 flyer and have that token as well. Ultimately needs the flyer, because if not, then the Vivians can just swing through for lethal. Point, just passing the turn back to me calling that sixth stone one stone away from being able to uh, mystery box play that sky round musketeer the two vivians get a little bigger sky round musketeer gets to see himself come in and get a counter swing in the air for a grand total of nine Josh is debating whether or not he wants to take that damage to be able to block the other one. The problem here, though, is that if he takes the damage from this one, that I can just burn all the counters from that Vivian after it's blocked to tap down his remaining creatures uh, and just swing through. So he's going to block here for the nine. Um, Orozuki is going to get killed. Put another counter on the Musketeer and just say pass the turn. Josh looking at his, at his hand here and sees a Ruined Earth, not really going to do much against this board state, seeing a Power of the Undead, also not really helpful for him at all because he can't target his own things because of the zero. He's going to go ahead and pay three here, 
um, starts to think about targeting the Guinevere and then says, hmm, let me see what I need to be able to do here. For the soul prison. Obviously taking the Vivian would, uh, taking the Guinevere would allow him to have another body, um, but it'd still leave him against two flyers. So he's instead gonna go ahead and say, you know what, we're gonna target uh, one of the um, Vivians, which ultimately I think is also incorrect um, because I can just sacrifice it to Guinevere, pump her up and use the counters before the Guinevere die, the Vivian even dies to just tap down his board. The problem is in this matchup is that um, if he wants to apply pressure, he has to walk into a potential situation where he's just going to get punished. Uh, and eventually, because I don't really care about having a lot of cards, every card I draw is actually very live. Unlike in his situation, every card he draws is potentially very dead. Uh, and Lucifer himself, as a judgment, doesn't really get him much value outside of putting an 8-8 flyer out there. So he hits himself for four by playing the ruined uh, the demon. It is an 8-8, eight, eight, which is helpful, but it does cost him four life to be able to play that. So he draws a card. You see he did draw into that um, life severing blade, but it's not really gonna do much because again, I'm probably just gonna accept the damage here from the token and then just fly over him. So nothing's really gonna get killed because I'm either bouncing or um, not really doing much of anything. Now on my turn, uh, or at the end of his turn, I'm going to go ahead and use Guinevere's effect here, leaving open some will, uh, some counters for Vivian to pull out the Camelot. And I'll target the zero and the token to go ahead and kill them. Now, in response to this, after they died, before going into my turn, this is actually an excellent opportunity for him to Life Severing Blade. Um, he could just Life Severing Blade. Um, one, the Vivian needs to get another counter here, or we missed that. And two, he could Life Severing Blade the Camelot um, and just get that out of the way. Ultimately, I'm threatening enough damage on board anyway that it doesn't really matter, but if he had double, he could kill two things. You see the mystery box come down just so I can play another card. Pretty weak mystery box overall. You can potentially snag a Lancelot, but having discarded two Lancelots already, seeing quite a few of my Guinevere's, seeing quite a few of my Viz and the Camelots out on board, not really going to be hoping for much more than this. Um, the Vivian's going to see themselves come in, um, the other guys are going to come in, and I just get to swing in the air with Camelot. Ultimately, it wouldn't have mattered because I could have just swung in the air with the Vivian if he only had one removal. But there you guys have it. That is the match. Huge thanks to Josh for sitting down and playing. Deck lists for both of these decks will be up later this week, so let me know and be sure to tune in for that. But until next time, this is DM073 saying Class Dismissed.